Hi, welcome to the Magic of Math, where we master math one video at a time. Today, my lesson is on special systems of linear equations. Our objectives today are that you will identify the number of solutions to a system of linear equations. You will also classify a system of linear equations. Here is what I would like you thinking about today as I proceed through the lesson. How can you determine the number of solutions to a system of linear equations without solving? Let's begin by talking about the different types of solutions that you can have with a system of linear equations. A system of linear equations can have one solution, no solution, or infinitely many solutions. So when you're given a system of equations, there are three possible outcomes. The first is one you're probably the most used to. You graph or solve and you get one point, the lines intersect at that one point of intersection, and that is one solution. And you give an ordered pair as your solution. Another thing that can happen is you could graph the lines, and in a minute I'll show you algebraically what happens, and they're parallel to each other. When two lines are parallel to each other, they will never intersect, so there will be no point that both lines have in common, therefore there is no solution. The third type of solution is when you graph the two equations on the same coordinate plane, and you can see I have one thin line here and then the thicker line. They overlap or coincide. It ends up that they are the same line once graphed. So since they are the same line, where there are infinitely many solutions. Remember, a line is an infinite amount of points. So every point on each of these lines is a true solution to both equations, and there's an infinite amount of them. So an infinitely many solutions. No solutions when they're parallel, and one solution when they intersect at one point. And that's kind of redundant because a line, two lines can't intersect at more than one point. So let's solve one together. I'm going to show you two different ways to solve this. I'm going to graph it so you can see it visually. And I'm also going to solve it algebraically. And it will be a system that ends up having no solution. So I'm given my two equations here. The first thing I'm going to do is graph them. So my first equation has a slope of 1 and a y-intercept of 3. So let's first go graph our y-intercept, and I'm going to rise and run 1 and plot a point and connect. So that's my first line. My second line has a slope of positive 1 and a y-intercept of negative 3. So plot our y-intercept at negative 3 and rise and run 1 and connect with a line. So you can visually see that these lines are parallel and that they do not intersect. But let's also prove this algebraically because this isn't the most efficient way to solve a system and you will most likely be solving algebraically. So I am going to identify that y is equal to the expression x plus 3. So I'm going to go to the second equation and replace y with that expression x plus 3 which gives me x plus 3 equals x minus 3. So I'm going to collect variable terms to the left and subtract x from both sides. When I do that, that is a zero pair, as is that. So I'm left with positive 3 and equals negative 3, which is a false statement. That is not true. And that's how we know there is no solution. So when this happens algebraically, and it's just like when you're solving an equation in one variable, there is no solution. The variable term is eliminated and you're left with a false statement. When you graph it visually, the lines are parallel. Now let's look at a system that has infinitely many solutions. So when we solve this system, the first thing I'm going to do is graph it for you so you have a visual representation. Typically you would just go solve it algebraically, but let's start by graphing. So I have the first equation with a y-intercept of negative 1. I'm going to plot that point. And now I have a slope of 2. So I'm going to rise 2 and run 1 and connect my points. The second one is written in standard form. So I'm going to put in 0 for x to solve for the value of the y-intercept, which is 0, negative 1. When I plot that point, it's already plotted on our graph. And now I'm going to replace y with 0 to find the x-intercept. And when I do that, 
6x equals 3, divide by 6, x equals 1 half. So 1 half 0 is my x-intercept, and you can see 1 half 0 is already on the line. So we can see that these two equations are the same line. Now, if we were going to solve it algebraically, y is equal to the expression 2x minus 1, so I'm going to replace y with that expression. So 6x minus 3 times the quantity of what y is equal to from the first. Now we're going to distribute the negative 3 to the 2x and the negative 1. So we have 6x minus 6x plus 3. 6x minus 6x is 0, leaving us 3 equals 3, which is a true statement. Therefore, we have infinitely many solutions. So when the variable term is eliminated and you're left with a true statement, we have infinitely many solutions. And when you graph and you have the same line, infinitely many solutions. Now let's talk about classifying a system of linear equations. A system of linear equations can be classified as consistent or inconsistent and dependent or independent. So when we have a solution, a system that is graphed and they intersect at one point, we have one solution and we classify that as consistent and independent. When we have no solution because our lines are parallel, we classify this system as inconsistent. And when we have the same line and infinitely many solutions, we classify this as consistent and dependent. Now, let's go ahead and I'm going to ask you to pause the video here, determine the number of solutions, and also classify the system of linear equations. So you may want to go back, pause the video and go back and take some more notes, but I'm going to ask you for the number of solutions, not the solution, but the type of solution, and classify. Go ahead and pause and come back when you're done. All right, welcome back. So I'm going to do these algebraically now. I'm not going to graph them anymore. That's not practical. So the first thing I'm going to do is identify that these are both written in standard form. And the coefficients of x are opposites, so I'm going to go ahead and add and use elimination because that's a zero pair. Then I have negative 2y and 2y is also a zero pair, and 4 and negative 4 is also a zero pair. So this one's pretty easy. 0 equals 0 is a true statement. Therefore, there are infinitely many solutions, and to classify it, it's consistent and dependent. These will be the same line if you graph it. Your turn again. Go ahead and pause, determine the number of solutions, and classify the system. Come back and hit play when you're done. Welcome back. So I'm going to solve this one using substitution because they're both solved for y. So I'm going to replace y in the second equation with the expression 3x minus 7. So that gives me 3x minus 7 equals negative 3x subtract 7. I'm going to collect variable terms to the left by adding 3x to each side. This is 0. 3x plus 3x is 6x minus 7 equals our negative 7. Now I'm going to collect constants by adding 7 to each side. And this is my 0 pair, so 6x is equal to 0. Divide both sides by the coefficient 6. And x is equal to 0. I'm going to go back up to my original equation, the first one I'll use, y equals 3 times x, which we determined is 0. 3 times 0 is 0, so y is equal to negative 7. So my solution is 0, negative 7, which means I have one solution, and it's consistent and independent to classify it. Your turn again. Please pause, determine the number of solutions, and classify the system. Come back and hit play when you're ready. Welcome back. So I am going to again use substitution because one of these is solved for y. So let's replace y in the second equation with the expression negative 8x subtract 6. When I do that, I have 8x subtract 8x subtract 6 equals 6. Combine like terms, 8x subtract 8x is 0, leaving me negative 6 equals 6, which is not a true statement. Therefore, there is no solution to this system. It's inconsistent, and I know that if I graphed it, the lines would be parallel. All right, 
Now let's talk about how we could determine the number of solutions and classify a system without solving. So if you're asked to identify the number of solutions and or classify a system of linear equations, you can write each equation in slope-intercept form and compare their slopes and y-intercepts. So lines with different slopes will always intersect and have one solution, which will mean they're consistent and independent. So again, different slopes, consistent and independent because there's one solution. If lines have the same slope and different y-intercepts, they will always be parallel. Remember, we've learned in previous lessons that when lines have the same slope, they're parallel. If they're different y-intercepts, then they're different lines and parallel to each other. They will have no solution and be inconsistent. And the third thing that can happen is when they're both in slope-intercept form, if they have the same slope and the same y-intercept, they're the same line. So there'll be infinitely many solutions and it's consistent and dependent to classify. So let's go ahead and try this. I'm gonna jump right into your turn for your practice. Put both of these in slope-intercept form, determine the number of solutions, and classify without solving. Please pause now and come back when you're ready. Welcome back. So I'm going to solve, the first one's already in slope-intercept form, and I'm going to solve the second one that is in standard form for y. So I'm gonna subtract 18x from each side. This is my zero pair, giving me 2y equals negative 18x plus 11. To solve for y, I'm gonna divide each term by two, and it gives me y equals negative 9x plus 11 halves. So now I'm going to look at our slopes. They're the same, and our y-intercepts are different. So same slope, different y-intercept, that tells me that the lines are parallel and there'll be no solution and the system is inconsistent. Your turn again. Please determine the number of solutions and classify the system without solving. Go ahead and pause now and come back when you're done. Welcome back. So our first one is solved in, and it's not solved, but it's in slope-intercept form. We're going to solve the second equation for y to put it in slope-intercept form. So we're gonna solve for y. I'm going to subtract 12x from each side, leaving me negative 3y equals negative 12x, subtract 33. Divide every term by negative three. So this gives me y equals positive 4x plus 11. Now let's go back to our first equation, and this is our second equation in slope-intercept form. They have the same slope, and they have the same y-intercept. They are the same line. Therefore, since they have the same slope and same y-intercept, and they are the same line, they have infinitely many solutions, and the system is consistent and dependent. One more, go ahead and pause determine the number of solutions, and classify. Come back and hit play when you're done. Welcome back. So this time our first equation is in standard form and I'm gonna solve for y to put it in slope-intercept form. So let's bring that over here. I'm gonna subtract 2x from each side, giving me 7y equals negative 2x plus 19. I'm gonna divide each term by seven which gives me in slope-intercept form y equals negative 2 sevenths x plus 19 sevenths. So now I can go and compare. My slopes are different, and therefore I can stop there. When you have different slopes, there's gonna be one solution, which means our system is consistent and independent. So different slopes means they're going to intersect at one point and have one solution. So there you have it. Those are special systems of linear equations and how to determine infinitely many solutions, one solution, no solution, and we also learned how to classify today. So thanks for joining me today at The Magic of Math, where we continue to master math one video at a time. I hope you'll come back soon and have a great day.